and we're going to go to the moon. And not only that, there's going to be a traffic jam around the moon because Elon Musk has his Falcon Heavy rocket capable of going not just to the moon, but Mars. And then we also have the richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos. He has the new Armstrong rocket. And then the Chinese have the Long March rocket. We're going to have a traffic jam around the moon pretty soon. And I think our grandkids, our grandkids may have the option of honeymooning on the moon. The moon is only three days away. There's a hop, skip, and a jump. What if humanity could step foot on the moon and never leave? A base on the moon could revolutionize space exploration, open up new opportunities for science, and be a stepping stone to Mars and beyond. In this video, we explore the idea of a lunar base, how it could function, and the incredible challenges and benefits it presents. Why the moon? With its proximity to Earth, the moon is a perfect location for a base. It's only 384,000 kilometers away, meaning that, compared to other celestial bodies, it's incredibly close. But the reasons go far beyond distance. Exploration and science, the moon is a treasure trove of information. With a base, scientists could study its geology, history, and resources up close. Test bed for Mars, a moon base could serve as a critical testing ground for the technologies needed for Mars and beyond. Astronomical observatories, the moon's far side, which never faces Earth, is an ideal location for radio telescopes, shielded from Earth's electromagnetic interference. To help pay for these ambitious projects, astronomers have looked into the physics and economics of mining the moon and noted at least three potential resources worth exploiting. In the 1990s, an unexpected discovery caught scientists by surprise, the presence of large quantities of ice in the southern hemisphere of the moon. There, in the shadows of large mountain ranges and craters, is a perpetual darkness that is below freezing. The origin of this ice is probably cometary impacts in the early history of the solar system. Comets are mainly made of ice, dust, and rock, so any comet that strikes the moon in one of these shadows might leave a deposit of water and ice. The water, in turn, can be turned into oxygen and hydrogen, which happen to be the principal components of rocket fuel. This could turn the moon into a cosmic gas station. The water could also be purified for drinking purposes or used to create small-scale agricultural farms. In fact, another group of Silicon Valley entrepreneurs has created a company called Moon Express to begin the process of mining ice from the moon. It is the first company ever to get permission from the government to begin this commercial enterprise. The preliminary target for Moon Express is, however, more modest. The company will begin by putting a lunar rover on the moon that will systematically search for the presence of ice deposits. The company has already raised enough money through private funding to proceed with this mission. With the financing in place, all systems are go. Scientists have analyzed the moon rocks brought back by the Apollo astronauts and believe there may be other economically significant elements on the moon. Rare earth elements are crucial for the electronics industry but are mostly found in China. A few years ago, an international trade war almost erupted when Chinese suppliers abruptly raised prices on these key elements, and the world suddenly realized that China had a near monopoly. It is estimated that the supply will begin to be depleted in the coming decades, making it urgent to find alternate sources. Rare earths have been found in moon rocks, so one day it may be cost-effective to extract them from the moon. Platinum is another important element for the electronics industry, and the presence of platinum-like minerals perhaps left over from ancient asteroid impacts, has also been detected on the moon. Finally, there is the possibility of finding helium-3, which is useful in fusion reactions. When hydrogen atoms are combined at the extremely high temperatures found in these reactions, the hydrogen nuclei fuse, creating helium, plus large amounts of energy and heat. This excess energy is useful to power machines. However, this process also produces copious quantities of neutrons, which are dangerous. The advantage of the fusion process involving helium-3 is that it instead releases an excess proton, which can be handled more easily and deflected by electromagnetic fields. Fusion reactors are still highly experimental, and so far, none exist on Earth. But if they are successfully developed, helium-3 could be mined from the moon to supply fuel for the fusion reactors of the future. But this also raises a tricky point, is it legal to mine the moon? Or to stake a claim there? In 1967, 
The United States, Soviet Union, and many other nations signed the Outer Space Treaty, which banned nations from claiming ownership of celestial bodies like the Moon. It banned nuclear weapons from Earth orbit and from being placed on the Moon or elsewhere in space. The testing of these weapons was also prohibited. The Outer Space Treaty, the first and only one of its kind, holds to this day. However, the treaty said nothing about private ownership of land or the use of the moon for commercial activities, probably because those who drafted it didn't believe private individuals would ever be able to reach the moon. But these matters must be addressed soon, especially now that the price of space travel is dropping and billionaires want to commercialize outer space, the Chinese have announced that they will put their astronauts on the moon by 2027. If they plant their flag, it will largely be symbolic. But what happens if some private developer stakes a claim to the moon after arriving on his or her private spaceship? The technology behind a moon base. Building a moon base is no small feat it requires cutting-edge technology and innovative solutions. Let's dive into how we might make this dream a reality. Reusable rockets, like SpaceX's Starship or Blue Origin's New Glenn, are paving the way for affordable, regular transport to the moon. Construction on the moon needs to overcome extreme conditions, high radiation, extreme temperatures, and dust. Concepts like 3D printing with lunar regolith are being explored to create durable structures. Solar power is one option, with large rays that could generate energy even during the long lunar nights. Fusion power is another promising avenue for the future. Closed-loop life support systems will be critical, recycling air, water, and waste. Innovations in AI and robotics will play key roles in maintaining and operating these systems. A moon base will need reliable communication with Earth and other space missions. Advances in satellite networks, like SpaceX's Starlink, could provide high-speed data transfer. Living on the Moon Living on the Moon will be a unique experience. From the challenges of daily life to the psychological toll, astronauts will need to adapt in ways they've never had to before. The Moon's surface temperature swings from plus 127 degrees Celsius during the day to minus 173 degrees Celsius at night. Habitats will need to be insulated and shielded from radiation. Long stays on the Moon could have profound psychological impacts. Isolation, confinement, and the distance from Earth will test human endurance and resilience. Food will need to be grown on the Moon or shipped in. Hydroponic systems or soil cultivation might become critical for feeding the crew. Astronauts will perform scientific experiments, mine for resources, and maintain the base. Routines will be structured, but they will also have downtime for recreation and mental health. Medical technologies will need to be advanced enough to handle emergencies. Telemedicine, along with robotic surgeons, could be life-saving. Lunar economy and global collaboration. The Moon base will not just be a scientific hub but a cornerstone of a new lunar economy. However, establishing a base will require international cooperation and investment. Mining the Moon for resources like helium-3 and rare earth metals could provide an economic boost. In addition, lunar tourism could emerge as a new industry. Countries like the US, China, Russia, and private companies will need to collaborate, just as we've seen with the International Space Station. Who owns the moon? International treaties will need to address ownership of lunar resources and ensure the peaceful use of lunar space. Long-term lunar exploration will require sustainable practices to avoid over-exploitation of resources. The future of lunar exploration. A moon base could be just the beginning. It will lay the groundwork for humanity's expansion into the cosmos, providing the necessary infrastructure for Mars, asteroids, and beyond. The technologies developed on the Moon will be crucial for humanity's journey to Mars. A Moon base could serve as a stepping stone for missions that last years, not just months. Multiple bases, scientific stations, and perhaps even cities could rise as technology advances and the need for a permanent presence on the Moon grows. The Moon base might one day be the first outpost of an interplanetary civilization, setting the stage for humanity's future in the stars. The idea of a base on the moon is no longer just a dream, it's a very real possibility. 
As technology advances, what was once considered science fiction could become the next great chapter in human history. What do you think? Will humanity thrive on the moon? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this journey, don't forget to like and subscribe for more futuristic content from Digital Butterfly.